please. Um, before we get started, we're going to be uh, recording this meeting for additional attendees that said that they would like to have the information since not able to join us. Uh, so as promised, thank you so much for uh, being part of our launch day today with the 4950. We appreciate your time on this webinar. We're trying to uh, focus into two separate parts. One, where we're going to give an overview presentation. And then second, we're going to get into any questions that you have on a technical basis. I am excited to announce with this particular product the, with the 4950, uh, today we are launching. We are certified on all the major carriers. We have gone through six months of well testing this product. So it's available today to ship. And also we have a 60 day free sample policy so that you can place samples orders today. Uh, with that being said, I would like to turn the presentation over to our CEO, um, Rob Martin, uh, wearing a, a, an enchanting SunTech uh, mask there. Well, Rob, do you wanna give you the what? people a little bit overview today? Let's get SunTech unmasked here now. We've got, you, we've got the dream team and we got you back and uh, launching into some asset trackers uh, that SunTech's been working on for quite a while. Uh, as, as you're probably aware, uh, SunTech's been a market leader in the Latin America market for many years. And uh, a few years ago has uh, been taking the US market and Canadian market by storm. So I'm pictured here as some of our US team members. Uh, we've actually been very happy to say we've grown during 2020 and into 21, which is uh, an amazing thing. Uh, I can only say it's because we've got demand from, from great customers out there that have been partnering with us to test products over these last couple of years and take them to market. Uh, after this slide, we've, we've actually added four new people to our team. I'm in the office today unmasked. We're all uh, double vaccinated and feeling good about the future. Um, uh, in, in kind of the growth of SunTech, uh, this, during the end of 2020, we surpassed over 4 million devices sold worldwide. Uh, it's quite a milestone for SunTech, and we're uh, clipping along at a pace. We should be at about a million devices added uh, at the end of this year as well. Um, I'm at our office here, which is uh, in Vista, California. We've got uh, two office suites here. We're the, kind of the epicenter for uh, telematics uh, operations, hardware, uh, very close to a lot of the other companies that are involved in this sort of a thing. And SunTech's proud to have set up a headquarters here so we can provide uh, technical support, assistance, warehousing um, right locally here in, within the U.S. And um, be to, we're happy to be your hardware provider of choice. So uh, right for today, the, the purpose of this webinar is to shed some light on our, their, our new s series of asset trackers that uh, are different battery styles and can kind of come out of the darkness and, and um, add some extra support into your platforms that you're working on. So I'm going to turn the time over to Steve Voris, who's our vice president for engineering and customer support. He can talk to you about more of the technical details and we're going to get into some question and answers. So uh, our whole team's here to help you uh, answer questions about this. Steve, I want you to kind of get into the nitty gritty here. Happy to see you working at the home office still, but that's awesome. Tell us a little bit about SunTech's new solar asset trackers. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, this is a, a great new product. Uh, it's been in development for over a year, but in the last six months, we've been shipping devices to a few select customers and uh, testing this device out in the field. So what I'm gonna talk about today is our very unique solar powered 4950 GPS asset tracker. So this is the device here. Uh, it's very small, as you can see. Uh, it's a nice gray, dark gray box. It's waterproof. It's got some LEDs that you can just barely see uh, through the screen here. But most importantly, it's got a very large, very efficient solar panel on it. And so I'm going to talk about that in a little more detail uh, today in the next few slides. But briefly, what you've got is a self-contained, waterproof acid tracker. It works on CAD M1, uh, the 4G network. Um, and with this device, you can put it out in the sun and you never ever have to recharge batteries again. So for the life of this device, 
uh, typically about 10 years, you should be able to leave this in strong sunlight and it will capture enough sun, depending on the angle of the sun hitting the panel. And in doing that, you'll gather between one and nine reports for every hour of sunlight. And I'll talk about that in a little more detail. Uh, next slide, Jim. So what we've got, we've got the main unit here, which is defined as our ST4950. The ST4950, as shown in this photograph here, is a 5.2 amp hour battery pack inside of a solar powered asset tracker. It's, it's fairly small, as you can see, it uh, fits in my hand. Um, it's fairly small, it's very lightweight, about 300 grams, which is about uh, three quarters of a pound. And it's designed in its cross section here so that it can fit into the castellations or the ridges of a lot of shipping containers. It's also something that can be easily flush mount uh, to a um, shipping container or a semi -con truck. Uh, we also uh, sell a cradle, and I'll talk about this cradle in a few minutes, but this cradle allows you to snap it together. You can snap this together. And the back of the cradle has four ultra strong neobidium magnets, which once you, once you attach it to an iron surface, it's really pretty tough to uh, remove. You practically need to pry it off with a screwdriver. Okay, so what are the key features? Why do you want to buy this? Well, the number one reason you really want to buy this is it cuts the tether of the power supply. You're not constantly having to worry about recharging the batteries. Um, if you've got a device that's way out in a remote re uh, region, way out in the field, you don't want to have to be sending guys out to recharge or swap out the batteries every year. This device has um, a built-in battery recharger. So uh, what are we doing? Uh, we've got a, a network LTE, uh, so that's CAT M1. It also supports narrowband to IoT. So that means that it can communicate over the very efficient, very cost-efficient, and very power-efficient networks that are available. So this is supported by AT&T, Verizon, T-Mobile, um, and Bell, and uh, the former Sprint Network, which is now owned by uh, T-Mobile. Uh, we're also gonna be adding some other networks, uh, probably US Cellular, uh, very shortly. Um, it's a very, very, very low power consuming device. So when this device goes to sleep, it draws virtually no power. Um, in the microamp range. Uh, when it's lit up by sunlight, when it's angled and the sun is hitting it directly, we get an amazing 40 milliamps, 40 milliamps per hour of solar power. And that gives you the ability to transmit additional uh, reports about nine times per hour, uh, just using sunlight. Uh, the device has a low battery alert so if it is in the shade or in the dark or accidentally mounted upside down, it's gonna continue transmitting uh, for a shorter period of time, but it will let you know that the battery is getting low. Uh, we've also come up with a very novel capability that allows us to throttle down the reporting interval when the battery gets really, really low. So if you have this device up in Canada and it's covered with snow or it's uh, parked in a warehouse and somebody forgot to uh, recharge it and it's in the shade all the time, uh, the reporting interval can go from, let's say once every hour to once every two hours to once every four hours. And it can um, continue to uh, report just more slowly. Um, yes, ambient charging, um, I saw the question. Uh, yes, you can use ambient light to recharge it. Um, the reality is ambient light um, is probably about one eighth as strong as direct sunlight. So 
with ambient light, you're only going to get about one report per hour uh, for a reporting interval as compared to about nine reports per hour uh, based on direct sunlight. Hey, Steve, if we can just talk, uh, stop there because we do have a couple questions from Chad. Um, right. Chad, I did, um, uh, if you have any additional questions, if you can just come off of mute. I know you had a question about the container chassis cradle. Yes. <clears throat> yep, so Chad, here's the uh, container chassis cradle. And this is a magnetic mount uh, chassis cradle. And the E4950 snaps into that device. Uh, Chad, did you have any questions? In terms of mounting, mounting it on a uh, intermodal chassis, like what you might see, for example, um, you know, so the container comes off, now you're off the chassis. Um, the ambient light and this looks like a seven way adapter. Um, you know, will we just look at that as a tethered option and a solar option? And, and depending with ambient charging, what do you perceive the performance to be? What do I perceive the what to be? Perceive the performance to be, and I'll get a little, little bit more granular because the location for mm -hmm. a won't be optimal. Yeah. Um, so Steve, the, um, oh, Steve, can you repeat the question by chance? Yeah. Uh, so the question is, uh, what is the uh, optimal configuration uh, to mount this device uh, so that it gathers the most amount of energy uh, from the external light source? So um, in my room, I've got an overhead light, and I'm actually getting light from the light bulb in the room. I'm getting energy to charge this device and I get about one report per hour just based on indoor room lighting. Uh, when I'm outdoors um, in San Diego Sun, I get a beautiful nine reports per hour uh, throughout the day of um, um, San Diego Sun. Um, we don't change the laws of physics. Um, so it really depends on the physics of how much light energy hits the panel and the actual angle of incidence of the panel to the solar beam that's hitting the solar panel. Um, so if you're at the equator, you would want this device uh, laying flat. If you're in San Diego and the sun, we're at a latitude of about 33 degrees, um, you want to angle this device so that it is angled to gather the most sun at noontime. Um, if you're up in um, if you're up in Chicago or Boston, the angle increases, and then if you're up in Canada, the angle increases even more. So I think to answer your question, uh, the reality is people mount this. Um, at their most convenient uh, angle and most convenient location. Uh, but if you want to gather the most energy, then you would want to mount it on a bracket where you could swivel it. Um, so if you're on a telephone pole or flagpole, you'd want to mount it so it's on a bracket and it can be swiveled to capture the greatest amount of sunlight. That's a really good question, Chad. Um, Chad, did we answer your question or is there any follow-up on that one? Very good. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. You're welcome. Um, and Chad, we've also created a spreadsheet and a number of different tables that will enable us to work with you and calculate the, uh, the actual um, hours of sun versus reports. Uh, so we can work with you. Our, our field applications engineers uh, can work with you on that also. All right. But great question. Um, and, and really, that is probably the number one question about this kind of device is what is your battery life? Um, so this device can be running for about three years um, under normal usage uh, with a 5.2 amp hour battery. And that's three years at one or two pings per day. Um, we've got a larger battery available, a 7.8 amp hour battery. And that'll give you four years uh, of battery power. 
uh, that's without sunlight. Now, when you add sunlight to that, you obviously get many more reports per day. Um, later this year, we're going to release a 10 amp hour battery, and that should give up to five years of battery life on this rechargeable battery. Uh, this device is very, uh, very useful. It also has, um, in addition to its low battery alert, it has a three axis accelerometer. An accelerometer measures G forces in the X, the Y, and the Z axis. So if this is mounted on a trailer or a vehicle and it's driving along and you get an impact, that impact will be reported to the accelerometer and that can be transmitted up to the cloud. Uh, the device has a very, very sensitive GPS receiver. So the GPS receiver in this device, it's right under the uh, front panel here, the GPS receiver can receive uh, signals from the American GPS satellites or the European or the Russian GPS satellites or a combination of those. So you get uh, a very good solid uh, GPS reporting uh, from that. Uh, we typically see better than 10 feet of accuracy on this device. The device is also enabled to work with assisted GPS. An assisted GPS takes into account any inaccuracies in the satellite up in the sky, and it broadcasts that over the cellular network or over the satellite network and that gives you a, a better accuracy and a more repeatable uh, coordinate uh, for the location of this device. Uh, the device is firmware upgradable over the air. So let's say you buy these devices, you install them, and you're having them report once every hour. And then your customer says, well, I'd really like to have a report once every 45 minutes. Yes, we can just do a firmware over the air upgrade or a profile over the air upgrade. And we can just using uh, cellular data uh, very quickly, we can upgrade these devices. Uh, the container is waterproof. Um, so it's got gaskets inside and it is fully IP67 rated. Well, what is IP67? Um, some, of, some of you have probably heard that uh, phrase. IP67 means that I can drop this and fully submerge it in three feet of water and leave it there for a half hour. I can go out to lunch and come back and pull it out of three feet of water, open the case up and it's bone dry inside. So it's uh, designed to be very rugged and waterproof. Um, we've got an external power connector here. Well, why do you want an external power connector if you've got a solar panel? Good question. Well, the answer is uh, you might mount it on the back of a trailer or you might mount it on the back of a vehicle. And you might say, well, normally I want to report once every minute or once every five minutes. Well, that's really going to drain your solar powered uh, charger. So we sell a adapter cable and the adapter cable screws into this threaded waterproof connector here. And in doing so, you can connect this up to the taillights or headlights or turn signals or blinkers of a truck or a trailer or any 12 volt power so source, actually any power source between eight volts and 33 volts. You can plug that in and then you get much, much more uh, power coming into that battery. And then uh, you can report more frequently. So, Again, when you're under solar power only, you have to be fairly conservative about how many reports you want to send to the cloud versus how much sunlight uh, you get on the panels. And that's true of all vendors, all manufacturers, uh, solar power devices. We just have a very efficient solar panel, a very low power consumption device, and uh, a very well thought out uh, scenario. Uh, so this device also detects when it's plugged in to power. Uh, we've got circuitry inside that detects when it's charging, when it's discharging, and we can report that information up to the cloud. Uh, the device comes with AES-128 encryption available. 
So AES is Advanced Encryption Software uh, 128. That's a military grade software, which is considered virtually unhackable. Um, there will be people that will argue that, but the military and the federal government accepts this level of encryption uh, for providing uh, sensitive data uh, to be transmitted over this device. Uh, the device is fully programmable, so there's software inside and memory inside, which can be programmed again over the air. You can program this device via our free of charge SyncTrack software, and that makes it very, very easy to program it. Um, SyncTrack is much easier to use um, as a programming software than some other vendors. Um, some other vendors might use something called PegScript, which is rather painful to learn, and that's a command line uh, language. Um, SyncTrack is really just filling in the boxes with um, the number of minutes or hours uh, that you want different intervals uh, to be programmed at. Um, so we provide um, optional cables uh, for external power supplies. Uh, we provide or we sell wall warts that enable you to plug it into a, a wall ward adapter. Um, we provide a micro USB cable uh, that enables you to uh, program the device via SyncTrack. And we've got this really cute chess pawn that allows you to play magnetic chess. But seriously, it's a neomedium magnet. And this magnet can be run over the front surface of the 4950. And that's how we turn it on and turn it off. So to avoid a leaky waterproof switch, uh, instead we've got a magnet and the magnet triggers a Hall effect sensor inside the device. And that enables you to turn on the device and turn off the device. Um, Chad, I think uh, you had a question. Let's see. Will yep, I am muted, Chad. Um, so, Chad, if, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. Uh, so, speaking of specific trailer, um, when the tractor comes back and the kingpin drops and locks, uh, it's going to create a great amount of force. With respect to the impact accelerometer, at what um, G force would the system say, oh, we have a hook on a trailer? And then yes. I <clears throat> Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so the question uh, Chad's asking is uh, the internal three axis accelerometer, um, what G forces can it detect? And the answer is it'll detect from zero up to eight Gs on this device. So zero is uh, just standing still. Uh, one G means it's just been dropped at uh, 32 feet per second. That's 1G. Um, 8Gs means it's a collision that's probably not survivable by humans. So that would be a, a fatal collision. Um, a trailer um, uh, trailer and tractor connection doing a, ping, a kingpin drop, uh, that might be 1 to 2Gs and it's fully programmable. So with a little bit of experimenting, um, on the truck and trailer, you can program that and you might try 1.5 and decide to go up to 1.7 or 1.9 uh, G. Uh, but that's fully programmable uh, with this device and you can program that over the air. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, the question was answered, Steve. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Yeah, good question. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so again, the device is very rugged. Um, it's designed to meet the SAE J1455 uh, compliance. That's the Society of Automotive Engineers uh, compliance level for trucks and cars. So it's very rugged and it meets all the requirements for shock and vibration when it's uh, going over the road. Um, again, we offer three different battery flavors, uh, small, medium, and large batteries, uh, which give you longer and longer uh, battery life. And let's, let's go back to that uh, previous slide for a minute. Um, and then we offer accessories. 
Um, I just want to briefly go over on the lower left. This is our, our very attractive mounting cradle with very, very strong um, uh, magnets. You can also buy the, um, the cradle without the magnets. And without the magnets, you can then use screws or nails or epoxy uh, to attach this cradle uh, to any non-magnetic surface. We then offer a cable uh, that connects the device to a um, nine volt uh, wall wart adapter. We offer the standard nine volt, I'm sorry, 12 volt uh, wall adapter. Uh, we also offer uh, USB cables, and that's a standard micro USB uh, used for programming the device. And we sell a installer's kit, and the installer's kit includes everything shown except for the cradles, and that gives you a quick start guide and all the wires and cables that you might need for a variety of um, installation uh, scenarios. And, and of course, the, uh, the one in the lower right corner is the magnetic cradle. Uh, let's go to the next slide if we don't have any questions. Um, Steve, a couple of questions that I've had from customers yep. as well. Right. Um, I think it would be nice to be able to demonstrate, um, since the uh, on-off switch is waterproof, uh, where you would be able to apply the magnet to the device to do that. Yep. And also the the 12 volt power cable, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, it, it, it allows you to be able to see when the power cable is connected or not. Is that correct? Or Yes. <clears throat> yes. Um, so uh, excellent question. Uh, this is our device. Uh, we trademarked the name for this called Power Pawn. A clever name because it looks like a chess piece. Uh, the Power Pawn. Um, I don't think it's gonna show up on my camera, but there's an LED right here. And when you swipe the device, when you swipe the magnet over it, uh, the LED lights up and it goes from red to blue, uh, indicating that the device is turned on or turned off. So it's merely a, a sliding over and holding uh, the uh, magnet. Um, in front of the device. Um, some people ask, will it accidentally get triggered? And the answer is no. Um, this is a very strong magnet inside the power pond. So you do need a very, very strong intentional magnetic field uh, to turn this device on or off. But the beauty of it is it keeps the device uh, waterproof. And then the 12 volt cable that you ask about um, it has, let's see if you can see that in my screen, it has a threaded uh, connector and these two mate together and then they can be screwed together. And you get a nice uh, waterproof connector uh, going in there. All right. Um, um, uh, Steve, and, just and, also on that cable, um, uh, does the device um, tell the difference between battery power and 12 volt power on the cable? Yes. <clears throat> what type of applications would you use that for? Yes. Um, so lots of applications might be monitoring a trailer that gets placed in a yard, and the trailer might be only used at Christmas, Halloween, Easter, Fourth of July. You know, just uh, something that's only used for holidays, perhaps. So during that, uh, during the rest of the year, you might uh, run the device on solar power. And then when the device gets driven, the trailer gets hooked up to the tractor and it gets driven around. Well, then you've got 12 volts available coming into the connector, coming into the connector. So you might want 12 volts to be connected during the, the holiday season when you're driving the trailer around. And then you might do a report once every minute, once every five minutes. But the rest of the year, when it's just parked in the trailer yard, you don't have an active 12 volt battery driving this thing. And so then you're just running it off of sunlight. The device does have um, intelligence inside of it to determine whether it's getting power from the 12 volt trailer. 
and it sends that information up to the cloud. So you can measure the, the power coming in and the actual battery voltage on your 12 volt lead acid or 24 volt uh, lead acid batteries. So this device can also let you know that your trailer lead acid battery is getting low. So Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so the data is available. So on the platform, uh, if it's integrated, uh, you'll be able to see if the 12 volt to the truck is hooked up yes. or if it's running on the battery itself. Is that correct? And can you give a little more color on that? Yes. <clears throat> so our software platform that broadcasts data up to the cloud um, has a field in it. And the field in it says, um, is the device running on its internal lithium ion battery? And what is the voltage of that lithium ion battery? And what percentage of charge is left in the device? That's the, the normal operating uh, scenario for this. The additional operating scenario is you get this device plugged into the cable, and then this cable is plugged into your uh, 12 volts on your truck. And the software will then broadcast up to the cloud saying, I am now also plugged into a external 12 volt source. And the 12 volt source is at 12.75 volts. So my battery is fully charged and everything's running well. And maybe a month down the road, it might say my battery is now at 11.1 volts. And so you might want to recharge the lead acid battery. So that yep. information is broadcast up to the cloud uh, with each message that this uh, broadcasts um, up to the cloud. So when Wait. we broadcast a GPS message, we're also broadcasting the internal battery voltage and the external battery voltage. Great, thank you, Steve, for that clarification. I really appreciate it. Yeah, um, I, I think the next one, because uh, we want to get to any questions, <clears throat> is the available option, Steve? Yep, yep, great question. Uh, so this device uh, was designed to be um, um, offered in a couple of different flavors. Uh, one flavor is the lowest cost option, which has a 5.2 amp power battery. So this device has a very rugged lithium ion battery pack. Uh, the batteries inside are the lithium ion 18650 lithium ion rechargeable batteries. These are steel cased batteries, same uh, batteries that are used in the uh, Tesla uh, electric car, uh, the same batteries used in uh, vape or other uh, consumer products, uh, laptop computers. So it's a very rugged, uh, very cost effective battery. And we offer that as a uh, three year uh, estimated uh, battery life. Uh, we also offer an option where you can get a much larger battery and that's a 7.8 amp hour battery pack. So that's 7.8 amp hours or 7,800 milliamp hours, uh, if you like working in milliamps rather than amp hours. And finally, uh, later this year, we're offering a 10 amp hour battery pack. And the 10 amp hour battery pack gives you um, about twice the amp hour capacity uh, that the standard uh, device does. Um, each of these battery packs, of course, are larger and more expensive. Uh, so that's a, uh, a menu, a la carte menu that you can choose uh, when you purchase the device. And the device uh, mounts in the cradle as also shown on uh, the slide here. So <clears throat> what else are we offering? Um, SunTech is a custom telematics designer and a custom telematics manufacturer. So we build a wide variety of products. We listen to our customers and when our customer says, hey, Steve, I need something a little bit modified uh, to what your standard product is. We listen, we think about it, and then we say, well, if you're gonna buy it in volume, uh, we can discuss modifying our device a little bit and maybe add some different software or a different cable or um, add a different label to the device or do some minor customization. So uh, we have a number of customization features uh, that we're gonna add to these devices. 
uh, this device has been out in the wild for about six months. Uh, so with some um, uh, uh, limited test cases, we've shipped a few hundred of these devices out in the field. We've gotten good feedback from the field that this device was very well accepted. Um, the end customers were thrilled with the solar power capability of this, uh, with the rechargeableness of this, with the ruggedness of this. It's a very well-received device. But somebody came along and said, hey, Steve, I don't need solar panel. I'm gonna mount this inside in a shady area. I don't need this expensive solar panel. And I said, all right, uh, tell me what you need, they told me. And so we came out with a similar device where we've removed the solar panel. We've removed the cost of the solar panel. And so we're, we're gonna sell that, uh, releasing that probably at the end of the month. And that's the 4950DS device. So DS is the acronym for deleted solar. So it's the same device, um, comes with uh, similar battery options, uh, probably 7.8 amp hour battery. And then also in July, uh, we're gonna be releasing the 4910, which we released last year. That device has a 10 year battery, uh, a non-rechargeable battery in it. And we're adding to that Bluetooth and humidity and light and temperature sensors. So that's an amazing device. Uh, and with the addition of Bluetooth and an internal water humidity, light humidity, a uh, temperature sensor um, gives you a lot of versatility for a lot of applications. Then <clears throat> later in the summer, probably the end of July, uh, we will be releasing this 4950 device with added Bluetooth also. So you'll be able to get the same humidity, light, temperature sensors um, in this device. So that's uh, roughly what our roadmap looks like. Any questions on the roadmap? Thanks, Steve. I think we want to get into a Q and A session, but as you as yep. you stated here, um, we also have all certifications with our launch date. So not only is it well tested and available, uh, the devices are currently certified on Verizon, AT and T, T Mobile, and Bell. Yep. And um, as always with all SunTech products, uh, we're here to make it quite easy for you for evaluations. So we have a free sixty day evaluation on any of our products. Um, as you know, Centec is a hardware only provider, but we do have uh, test sims available and test platforms for you to be able to take advantage of. And we're ready to ship with our samples as well. Um, I thank you, Steve, for the presentation, but I, I think I'd like to get a little bit more Q&A now. Yeah, um, thanks, Jim. Manuel Morales, I know that you're out there and um, you also have, and your team have a lot of uh, ideas on channels uh, to be able to bring this product to. I'm sorry for calling you just on the spot there, Manuel, but can you just no talk problem, about, Jim. can you talk about just the general channels that you think that this would be really applicable to or any use cases? Uh, yes, uh, definitely. We see a uh, large OEM uh, customers that uh, you, you're very familiar with, right? That we are being working together that might be uh, uh, of a target of interest for these uh, new products. Uh, specifically the 4950 that we're discussing. But actually, I, I have a quick question, if you don't mind, uh, Jim. Oh, please do. Yeah, <laughs> reviewing the, this uh, 4950 uh, DS that Steve just presented, what would be the major, let's say, uh, difference or benefits vis-a-vis uh, -vis the 4910, just to, out of curiosity? Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, so. The device as it is has a rechargeable battery uh, in it. Um, so the 4950DS will still have a rechargeable battery and that would only be recharged via the 12 volt uh, power cable. So this would be very useful for mounting it inside a semi-truck trailer, inside an 18 wheeler trailer or inside any vehicle uh, you'd mount this inside where you're not planning on getting sunlight. And you would connect the power cable up to the tail lights or any 12 volt source. And with an hour or so of power um, plugged in, uh, you're gonna get lots of reporting time uh, capabilities. 
Okay, oh, thanks, uh, Steve. Appreciate it. Mm -hmm. The 4910 uh, device, on the other hand, that's designed to be a install and forget device. You install it, you've got 10 years of batteries, uh, so you never need to really worry about them, about recharging them. Right, right. And coming back to James' question, we definitely see a, a different use case where, of course, both uh, options will be definitely very beneficial. As you know, our, my, my specific company, we work along with, uh, with Suntech in terms of customizing some of these uh, solutions no, to, to end customers. So it's very beneficial to have all these alternatives uh, in place, uh, Steve. So again, I appreciate all the information you're, you're sharing today. All right. All right. Very good. We enjoy working with you. Thanks. Thanks, Manuel. We really appreciate it. Um, I think we had, uh, Chad had an additional question. <clears throat> uh, Chad, let me try to unmute you here. Yep. Um, Let's see. So does the report throttling require new firmware? And if so, when available, may want to take this mm -hmm. offline, but we're, we're open to that uh, too, Steve. Can you yep. uh, give some color on that? <clears throat> yeah, so Chad's got an excellent question. Um, we added a new feature um, just a couple of weeks ago uh, to this device where if the battery starts to get very low, so if the battery gets down to its last 20%, of um, internal charge, um, do you want to let the device just die in the field and then maybe it gets lost or do you want to figure out a way to conserve it? So what we've come up with is a scenario that's in firmware that will slow down the reporting. So maybe you were reporting once every hour. Uh, when the battery gets down below 20%, we've got some optional software feature that allows you to double or quadruple the reporting interval, slowing it down and conserving the battery life. So maybe you only had one week of battery life left. You could uh, quadruple that and make it one month of battery life just by slowing down the intervals. Uh, that firmware uh, should be available at the end of June, uh, Chad. And so um, if you're interested, in, we can uh, install that firmware in your device and uh, let you test it out. In terms of firmware, uh, I'm, I'm pretty familiar with a lot of the uh, solar devices. Um, what is sometimes best practice? Is the best practice to put out small patch filters or wait for larger ones? Uh, your audio was garbled. I was struggling to hear. Uh, could you repeat that, please? The question was in terms of um, how Suntech pushes up firmware. Oh. Is the best practice to use uh, smaller patches or um, to, let's just say, bundle three to five patch fixes or new you know, features you may have? Um, what's the methodology? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. Um, usually, what we do um, is. Steve, I'm do... sorry. Can you repeat the question, Steve? Yeah. Um, so, Chad was asking what's SunTech's best practices? Uh, for firmware updates, do we prefer to do installs in multiple levels, like uh, do three or four small patches, or do we do one full patch? And our preference is to do one full patch. Um, our firmware updates are actually very small. The firmware is typically about 10 kilobits. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty small uh, firmware update. Uh, that uh, gets sent out over the air. And we can usually do that all in one quick session. It usually takes a minute or two uh, when it gets uh, transmitted. And we usually do it uh, um, all at once as opposed to multiple uh, small patches. Uh, does that answer your question? Thank you very much, Doug. All right, great. So th thank you, Steve. I think that's a, a pretty good overview. As mentioned, we're always here to be able to support your custom needs. Um, I'm just going to, to open up to everyone. If anybody has any additional questions, please feel free to speak up now or raise your hand. Um, but I think we covered them pretty well. Uh, Chad, is there any additional questions that you have by chance? None at the current moment. I'm sure I'll have a million in about five minutes. Okay. 
<clears throat> well, well, we're we're here to support and uh, personally reach out to myself, Steve, or Rob, um, as always, and we'll be able to get you an answer as soon as possible. Um, with that being said, um, it looks like we got a couple more. We got Bill, Carolyn, and Gary. Um, if you have any questions, please raise your hand. I'll try to unmute you as well. Um, but it doesn't look like we have any additional questions. So uh, I'd just like to just say thank you to everyone for attending this. Um, really quick there, Rob, I know that uh, you've still been listening through this. Any additional uh, feedback that you'd like to give? Yes, Jim, how can I purchase uh, some of these for use in my applications? You sure can. Well, we're, we're ready to testing and we've been testing for almost six months as uh, Steve said, so we're launch ready. So we have all of these items available in our California warehouse. Uh, you can be able to order them today for our 60 day uh, free evaluation testing. And from there, we also do have stock supplies. So we're ready and available to be able to make your shipments today. So if any of you do uh, want to have a demo, I'm gonna be reaching out to everyone directly after this call. Uh, feel free to get in contact with sales at SunTech US or any of us directly. With that being said, uh, Rob, uh, do you have anything else in party? Yeah, please uh, go. We'll be posting this to our YouTube channel and uh, on LinkedIn. And so go ahead and if you get a chance, please uh, like and share on the various social media and spread the good word about SunTech. We appreciate your time today, everyone. Okay, so last call with any additional questions, uh, please let me know. And we do appreciate your time. Uh, as Rob mentioned, this will be posted to YouTube a little bit later today. And as always, feel free to contact us at suntechus.com. Thank you for attending this call and I uh, hope you have a great day. Thank you all. <clears throat> Thanks, Jim. Thanks, Chad. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.